Oh yeah. Yeah, mechanical streets were eliminated in 1936. Yeah, Montreal. Yeah. That was the big clock that was on the outside of the bank for years and years and years. And it doesn't work. And when they renovated the bank, they took the sign down, but thought we might like to have it here. So yeah, it looks pretty nice yeah, in there. It doesn't work. I know. We had the clockmaker guy come. And he did his darndest, but he said, you know, over the years with the weather and being outside and yada yada. Careful. <laughs> Just help yourself. It's me, it doesn't fit me. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely. And then you had to cross your arms in the front and then it was tied in the back. See? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty wild, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the original Snuggie, the uh, yeah, like that's crazy. Prior to 1911, any Albertan that was declared mentally ill was sent to the asylum in Brandon, Manitoba. Oh, and then after they they built the building here in 1911, they sent all the Albertan residents back to be in our hospital. So they came on the train, it took them three days. They had to sit up and they had a doctor and a nurse and um, six, no, I forget how many, it was over a hundred anyway, patients. The ladies wore the restraining dresses and the men wore the jacket. Oh, and that they, is a dress. And then when they got here, they got off the train and uh, they had a rope and they tied them all together because they had to walk from downtown out to the hospital and they were afraid to lose to somebody. Them. So it's like what you see in kindergarten today where the kids go and they hold the rope so that they go, well, that's what they had to do. But it sounds so brutal when they just say, yeah, they were tied all together. Yeah. But it's like, well, yeah. it was for their safety. It truly was. Yeah. And there were several that were really ill and uh, they should never have transferred them back, but that's government crazy. And of course, they they didn't have to walk. They rode in a wagon. I think it would have been more comfortable to walk. <laughs> but they died that first year. Wow. Um, yeah. It was 50, they opened the hospital with 52 patients and 164 came by train from Manitoba. So they were overcrowded from day one and they had to keep building more buildings because everybody had to be segregated. The women were separate from the men. So there was a building for ladies and a building for men and then another building and another building and it went on and on and on. And we have this picture. This is, um, this is from 1965, the artist's rendition and this is a photograph of it of all the buildings that were there. And then this is today, like they wiped that all down and built all brand new, except for the heritage building, which is still oh, there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. and, and when they started, they, they had the 164 patients. They maxed out at 1,775. And then they started building facilities for different things because originally, um, if you had something that was not normal, a normal disease, <laughs> you got put in the mental hospital. Yeah. So we had all the all the soldiers that came home with TB got put in there. Oh. And that was so contagious and so that yeah. made so many more people sick that they realized they had to build the sanitarium in Calgary and in Edmonton wow. to move those. And then so many soldiers came back with shock and not knowing what that was, they um, they realized that they needed to build military hospitals. So they did in Calgary and Edmonton for them. And then at the end of the war, there were so many children born with Down syndrome. Yes. And a lot of them were extreme, you know, severe. And what do you do with them? So into the mental hospital. So you had all these... Um, strange children with all these adults that are suffering from schizophrenia 
had it must have been a nightmare just a nightmare imagine. so then they built uh, the provincial training school in red deer to remove the children over to that so that they were out and that brought the population down to about 500 600 severely mentally ill adults and then um they when they started they had a staff of like maybe 200 and in the now we have 500 patients and a staff of a thousand unreal hey and we don't have a farm anymore we used to have the farm oh because they had to be totally self-sufficient yeah. so um the reason they chose pinoco was because they had um a section of land the government owned here and it was halfway between calgary and edmonton and it's out in the boonies that could be hidden away yeah and uh, so they they started up and uh, they had to import a uh, a dairy herd from Quebec because back in 1911 we didn't have a lot of dairy cattle in this area. Oh my <laughs> god. And uh, they had horses to do all the work and uh, the patients if they were well enough they went out and helped. They all had their little job to do even if it was just combing the tail of the horse or whatever. They had to pick the eggs they whatever there was yeah. a little job that they could do and they wanted to do it or well enough to go out and do that they did It's so um, all of this is a Pinoca hospital or just psychiatric in Alberta? It's, it, yeah, it was originally the uh, um, provincial, well, it was the provincial insane asylum. Oh, okay. But because it started with a P, <laughs> it's also Pinoca and it was in Pinoca. So everybody, I mean, that became the, the deal, yeah. you know, the, the mental hospitals in Pinoca. And then um, they changed the name from uh, the mental hospital to Alberta Hospital because they wanted to drop the mental out of it. And then, uh, well, no, first it was the insane asylum. Then they changed it to the uh, provincial mental hospital and then to Alberta Hospital. And now we're the Centennial Center for Mental Health and Brain Health. So they brought it all back, you know. But, full circle, eh? Yeah, full yeah. circle. But they closed the farm in the late 60s. And that was something, they had the farm to provide all the food and whatnot. But they also did that at um, all the jails in the province as well. The jails all had farms. Oh, okay. And it was all shut down because um, somebody in government felt that everybody needed to be paid a decent wage. And, and realistically, when you're in prison or a mental hospital, yeah. you have room and board. You have, um, in the mental hospital, they had three Medication. square meals. When the meds came, they had their meds. They got a cigarette every hour if they smoked. Whoa. You know, and I mean, they had all kinds of um, treats when you think about ice cream and candy and stuff like that. That was all there for them. So what did they need money for? Yeah, You know, they could have paid them, and I think they did, a couple of dollars every month just so that they could go and buy other things if they had been left at the hospital with nothing. 
And a lot of the first patients, that's exactly what happened because nobody's family wanted to admit that they had a mentally ill yeah. person. So they just dropped them off and left. And so sadly, they stayed there for the rest of their life, died, were buried in a pauper's funeral. Like they, if, if they were religious, the, the, the church would do a service, but then they were all buried in unmarked graves in the cemetery. Like the town knew who was in each grave, but, um, no markings so that nobody knew that, oh. that they were there. But if if you were from town, you knew that the north end of the cemetery was where they were there. I yeah. never knew that. Yeah. So, it's, a diff it's sad, but it was needed. It truly was. And still to this day, you know, and sadly now, the biggest portion of residents up there are geriatric um, Alzheimer's danger to themselves and others can't be in nursing homes or whatever there's three units wow six no there's six units three that are totally locked down and three that are semi -locked. and then there's the big focus is on brain injury and that's become quite a facility there's two units of patients from mostly from alberta but also from saskatchewan and Places, and that's dealing with people that have been in accidents or strokes. Yeah. So still, like if you're schizophrenic or depression or whatever, you can be admitted to the ADA. I work with him in Canada. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, and then we've got now, like, up there, there's so many young people. Well, they're pretty spiffy looking. Pretty spiffy wardrobe. Nineteen twenty. 